Now look, no doubt bikes are getting increasingly expensive and we're regularly seeing prices of 15 or 20 grand for the big bikes. But what if you're not absolutely made of money? Well, fortunately, there are still plenty of awesome bikes that still sneak under that 10K mark. And so in this video, I'll give you my picks for each of the major categories of bike. And there's no strict methodology here. These are just the bikes that I'd personally choose if I had 10 grand in my pocket and I was going straight down the dealer to blow it all in one go. So so let's get underway and let me know what you think of my choices down in the comments. First up, we've got the Adventure category and I think here I'd have to go for the KTM 790 Adventure. This is basically the same as the 890 Adventure, which I think is the best all-round middleweight adventure bike on the market, but just with a few key changes. Firstly, as you might have guessed from the name, it's a little bit down on capacity and so also it's a little bit down on power, but still 94 horses is plenty and this is a lively parallel twin that will absolutely keep you entertained. The other big change is that it's now made out in China by CF Moto under KTM supervision as opposed to built in their own Austrian factories. Now is that going to be to the detriment of the build quality? Well I recently reviewed the Naked equivalent which is the 790 Duke also made by CF Moto and I was extremely impressed with the finish. Side by side with an Austrian produced bike you can barely tell the difference. And yet owing to the cost effective production process you've got a heck of a lot of spec for under 10 K. With the 790 Adventure, you still get that in-house WP suspension, which is excellent, decent own brand radially mounted brakes, spoke wheels with off-road specific diameters, and Pirelli Scorpion Rally SDR tires. Then you've got a full pack of tech with a TFT dash and lean sensitive rider aids, but perhaps most of all, you get their big 20 litre tank that hangs low either side of the bike, and this low weight distribution gives it a super planted feel both on-road and off. But I will say an on Honorable mention here goes to the Honda Transalp that comes in at 9,499. And while it may not be as off-road focused as the KTM, and perhaps a little bit more conservative in the looks, it's still a brilliant bike for the money and offers a lot of the same features with a great engine at the core. Now I know some of you won't believe that I've not picked the Tenere 700 from Yamaha or the Touareg 660 from Aprilia, but both are now over 10 grand which takes them unfortunately out of the running. Next up, we've got the cruiser segment, and I've gone for perhaps a bit of a curveball here, but it's the Moto Guzzi V9 Bobber. Now, I recently did a group test of some of the key sub 10 grand cruisers with the Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650, Kawasaki Vulcan S, and the Honda Rebel 500, and the Enfield easily came out on top with more class and character than the other two, whilst only costing a smidge over seven grand. But in terms of getting the best bike for under 10K and maximizing my use of that budget, Personally, I think I'd go for the Gutsy. You're getting that 850 longitudinally mounted V-twin, which just gives it that bit more shove with 65 horsepower as opposed to 45 and 20 newton meters more peak torque. Plus, you get that typical Moto Gutsy side-to-side -side wobble when you fire it up. Just generally, it feels like a bigger, more substantial bike, and it has that bit of Italian flair and je ne sais quoi about it. Now, the honorable mention here goes to the Honda Rebel 1100, and at £9,599, it's a lot of bike for your money, and it gets the brilliant parallel twin from the Africa twin. But this category of bike has to have a little soul for me, and while the Honda is a great logical purchase, it just feels a bit sterile and doesn't quite have the swagger of the Moto Guzzi. Now, this was probably the highest hardest category to choose from, I had so many options, about 12 bikes on my shortlist, but for me, it absolutely has to be the Yamaha MT-09, primarily because the engine is absolutely excellent. It's their CP3 inline triple, which makes just shy of 120 horsepower, but it also has bags of torque and mid-range and a lively throttle delivery that will constantly induce in-helmet grins on a spirited road ride. The soundtrack is excellent too for a stock exhaust, and although it might not be a look, the twin exits on either side of the belly of the bike put out a stereo triple roar which only enhances the ride. Combine that with thoroughly decent handling and a versatile upright riding position and you've got a bargain of a naked bike that should always whet the appetite when you lift the garage door. The only blocker for some potential buyers might be the looks which are unashamedly Yamaha so if you can't get on with the Cyclops face then perhaps take a look at the Triumph Street Triple R or the Aprilia Tuono 660 factory which both sneak 
week in under 10k. Now before we get on to the next one, I just want to say a massive thanks to today's video sponsor and that's Speedo Angels. They make dash protectors for pretty much all of the bikes on this list and they could save you hundreds of pounds if not thousands. Take the MT-09 for example, you're talking 620 quid for a new dash assembly if you scratch or damage it and yet Speedo Angels dash protectors cost just a few quid and they make them for many models across all the major manufacturers. So check out the link down in the description to pick up yours and you'll also find a 20% discount code down there specifically for our viewers. So once again, a massive thanks to Speedo Angels for their support and with that, back to the bikes. Now on the retro front, I think I'd have to go for the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650 and there are plenty of nice options from Triumph with a little more power and refinement and you've also got bikes like the Yamaha XSR 700 and Kawasaki Z650 RS. But for me, the Enfield offers the most old school authenticity with its air and oil cooled parallel twin. And while it might not be super powerful, this is probably the category in this list that's least concerned with out and out speed. The looks are almost perfect in my book. The proportions are on point. There's a wide range of color choices and the details are there with the right amount of classic touches. Plus there's the price from £6,399 in its most basic paint option, which leads loads of budget for customization, which can be a big part of retro ownership. A more free-flowing exhaust, for example, can do wonders for the sound of this bike. And there are plenty of parts available from third parties like Motone or Back to neaten it up and really make it your own. Now, if you do want something retro, but perhaps a bit more off-roady and rugged, then you'll have to look elsewhere because Enfield don't currently have a Scrambler in their lineup. My pick would either be the Triumph Scrambler 900, which is absolutely beautifully designed and gives you that typical classic Scrambler look with modern performance, or there's the Ducati Scrambler Icon, which just about creeps in under 10 grand. This year, it's had a big update with a bit of weight loss, new visual tweaks, and a TFT display which opens up some riding modes and phone connectivity. And so this is a tough one because they're both so good, but I think I'd end up going with the Ducati because it's got a bit more power by about 10 horses, but mostly it's a lot lighter by almost 40 kilograms. That means it feels more lively and nimble on the road, and I think that would keep me more entertained and more in love with it in the long run. Now over to the sports bikes, and I really, really wanted to pick the Aprilia RS660, which in my opinion is pretty much the perfect sports bike for the road. You've got stunning looks that give you a bit of a slice of their bigger RS V4 and a punchy little parallel twin that makes a handy 100 horsepower peak. It's a great chassis, loads of tech too, and the riding position is surprisingly comfortable and road friendly. But the problem is that it comes in at just over 10 grand, and despite the fact that dealers regularly discount them to well below that, if we're being straight and going off the official RRP, then it has to be the Yamaha R7. For roughly nine grand, you get a decent engine in the CP2 parallel twin, and at more like 70 horsepower, it's nowhere near as fun as the Aprilia, but it does still do the job. Plus, you do get the R1-inspired looks, fully adjustable suspension, radially mounted brakes, and a pretty sporty riding position that makes you feel like you're actually on a sports bike, which is sometimes lacking on the competition. But if that all sounds a little cramped and uncomfortable to you, then you might want to look at a sports tourer. And in my opinion, under 10 grand, there's none better than the Triumph Tiger 660 Sport. In fact, this could well be one of the best bikes on this list, and it's a proper all-rounder. It can hustle a bit, as well as cruise in comfort and carry a passenger and luggage. Now, I've actually tried it back to back on the same day with the competition from Yamaha and Kawasaki, and I truly believe it's the best of the bunch. So if you want to see my full review of this absolute corker, from Triumph. I'll put it up on the screen here so you can give it a click and give it a watch. Many thanks for watching today and we'll see you in the next one.